My name is Samantha Henley, and as a remote and rural physician, I often do tend to cover vast areas where we'll be based in one clinic but have to fly out to others or have to drive an hour or so to another local area, another satellite clinic. The major issue is access to health care. It's very challenging to organize healthcare around a, a small population distributed over a very large area. As a physician working in, in rural Saskatchewan, the challenges are the location. Uh, sometimes it's hard for the patients to get to the, to the hospital or for the physician to get to the patient uh, or for the, the, the hospital to get the patient to a bigger center in the city. Most of my practice in the past almost 20 years has been in bigger centers where we have the luxury of uh, CT scans, MRIs, specialists. We don't have that in the smaller communities. We've had a lot of communities in crisis where there have been absolutely no physicians left. When transport time and lack of physician availability is an issue, there's always a risk of compromising their care. Okay, have you seen his blood work yet? Yes. Okay, good. Because the concern that I now have is that his renal function is worse than it was the last time I saw him. I often have to rely on the skills and abilities of the registered nurses in the remote and rural communities because they're it. They're there. They're seeing my patient. They're doing their assessments. Um, they are basically our eyes and ears, um, and we rely very heavily on what they tell us. They know the subtleties that are very, very, very important to the rest of our management. Have you ever had any problems with ear infections before? Yeah. It doesn't look like there's any infection at the moment, but it does look like there is a, is a rupture. We do get an idea about some of the patients if we see them regularly, but the nurses on the ground are the ones who see them on a regular, regular basis. They know them best. We have 37,000 people in the northern half of the province, and trying to figure out how to organize services for those folks is pretty challenging. In many of the rural and remote areas, registered nurses are the only people who are there. They're often the only people in the community. Some places don't have physicians for weeks at a time, so the registered nurse would be there providing the primary care for these patients. My name is Dre Irwin. I'm a registered nurse with Additional Authorized Practice, and I currently work in Pine House, Saskatchewan. Pine House is a northern community, approximately 1,500 people. It's very isolated. The nearest town is probably about an hour and a half. As the primary care provider, on a normal day-to-day -day basis, we deal with things such as depression and mental health illness. We also focus our attention on healthy living and wellness. Are you just concerned? Come back, okay? The three nurses that work up here work independently. There's no physicians. We're the ones that are responsible for making these decisions. Sure, but in your case, both your tonsils are little. We are required to have additional authorized practice, which is an extra license that gives us the autonomy to deal with some of the common diseases that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Additional authorized practice was developed because there simply were not providers available in the rural areas to provide these services. In a community like Pine House, there is a lack of specialists. So having registered nurses in our community means that they can take care of our primary care, our everyday needs, so that we don't have to travel out every day. Well, when you're working out La Ronge and you're unable to have physicians go out to these outlying clinics, it's actually really important to have the registered nurses working up there because they're the RNs with the extra training. They're the RNs who can do the assessments, who can do some screening, who can order some basic blood work and discuss about getting x-rays and sending them across to La Ronge for further investigation. If we can't solve the problem amongst ourselves, then we work outside and we communicate with the physicians. Hi, Henley. All right, drives, give me a second. Okay, can you give me their name? We're still there remotely, but at the same time, they have the patient in front of them. It's their eyes, it's their ears, it's their clinical skills. They have to make their judgment calls on what they do next, and what they're seeing in front of them. And her family's noticed some changes in her personality that I'm kind of concerned about. Right, how many days has she been sick? 
having that close relationship with these physicians is imperative for us to provide safe care for these clients. Physicians know us well enough to know that if I'm concerned about something, then it's legitimate. Working in Pine House, um, the nurses work Monday to Friday, eight to five. And then afterwards, we're always on call. And we see everything from alcohol-related uh, uh, to lacerations, to uh, motor vehicle accidents, and, and we're it. I think that the health team that we have do a really good job. I notice that the ambulance is very responsive and it's very important to have quality health care in remote communities. I think it'd be detrimental to our community not having the registered nurses. They're able to see them, treat them. You know, they can do a lot of stuff up there, and it means that the patients don't necessarily have to come down to us. So when it's blinking like that, that just means the highlights are a little overexposed. So what I would do, let's just check out the settings here. Nurses who live in rural and remote communities are part of the community, and the research certainly shows the relationships they have with community members, with families, that that's a major strength. The thing about working up here is that we wear so many different hats. We don't always see people that are sick. You know, our focus here isn't just to treat a blood pressure or an infection. We want to promote healthy lifestyles. We want to promote a healthy community and prevent these problems from ever occurring in the first place. Perfect. One of the biggest challenges of working up north is the isolation. We see a lot of addiction and we see a lot of people with poor coping skills. So one of the most important parts of our job as a primary care nurse is being there for them as a friend, as a nurse, as a counselor, as an educator. Pine House has, and all the North has, um, a really young population. Dre is really proactive in the community, and I notice that a lot of the youth are very drawn to him. We focus on population health, and we focus on educating the public to be healthy. And that's a very rewarding part of the job. The best path forward for rural and remote health care is to focus clearly and intently on the patient and the family and their health care needs. One of the things we're looking at here at the University of Saskatchewan is investigating ways in which we use digital technology, connecting patients via telehealth or via remote presence technology will certainly enhance the ability to provide care. I mean, the last time I was here to see if we can get that organized, I think I'm going to need to get it sooner rather than later. Things that we need to do to bring better care to remote and rural communities. Number one, we need to recruit physicians. And we need to make sure that even if there aren't physicians available, we do have an alternative backup plan. When it comes to delivering healthcare, one of the main things is time. And you have to manage the patient in a very timely manner because time is, is, is life. And when does her symptoms start? Because registered nurses are the available health professional in communities, it would make sense to look to registered nurses to provide additional practice to meet patient needs. I see the need for additional authorized practice to be expanded to a variety of areas where it would serve patient needs very, very well. Everyone deserves the same level of care no matter where they live, which is why we're trying our best to put nurse practitioners into the small communities where we can't get a physician. Rural and remote populations deserve equitable care. So using the technology that's available to us, using the resources of people like registered nurses to do the assessment that needs to be done without people having to make those kinds of long distance travels. Those are really things that we need to be challenged as a society to address.